so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Rio, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> In this bulletin, Australia committed to restoring normal relations with Fiji. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit next month. And the Fijian economy is poised for its fifth year of consecutive growth. Good evening, welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Australia's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has met Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama and the Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola. Bishop has brought with her good news that Australia has lifted all remaining sanctions and is ready to help establish full and normal relations with Fiji. Chanel Sivan reports. Julie Bishop arrived in the country early this morning. Her first stop was at the Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama's office. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Congratulations. Well, welcome to Fiji and welcome thank to Suba. Thank you, thank you. Oh, now, nice. um, indigenous, indigenous art from Australia. Tell me about this. Mm. That's a carver bowl. Carver bowl. Yeah. Of course, of Yeah. This is the first visit to Fiji by a foreign minister since the September 17th election and the first bilateral visit by an Australian foreign minister since 2008. <laughs> Next stop was at the Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Komambola's office. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here to underscore the commitment that Australia has to ensure that our relationship with Fiji is as strong and enduring as it can be. We were delighted with the conduct of the elections and we look forward to working very closely with the new Fijian government. So the purpose of my visit was to confirm the strength and depth of the relationship and then discuss ways that we can work together in partnership. Australia is also resuming a full defence and regional security relationship. I confirmed to Prime Minister Bani Marama today that the last legal hurdles um, had been removed and now all of the uh, defence sanctions have gone and therefore there can be full cooperation at a defence level and I think that we will shortly be seeing senior defence people from Australia visiting Fiji and senior people from the Defence Force in Fiji visiting Australia. Australia also invited Fiji to join the seasonal worker program and a memorandum of understanding will put the necessary arrangements in place for this program to begin. Well, so far the uh, program is very much demand driven. We will assess the number of uh, Fijians who want to come under the seasonal workers program. We have to work out how many Australian employers uh, want Fijian seasonal workers. Currently it's in the areas of um, hospitality and uh, and agriculture and we're hoping that we might be able to even expand it so we're looking forward very much to having Fijian workers as part of our seasonal workers program. Bishop has also confirmed that Australia's new High Commissioner to Fiji Margaret Toomey is expected to take up office soon. We had nominated her some time ago and she's very much looking forward to coming to Fiji. She has family connections with Fiji that go back um, generations, so she's very keen to be the High Commissioner and very proud to undertake that role. Bishop will be hosted to a reception tonight by the Foreign Affairs Ministry. She addresses the Fiji-Australia Business Council meeting and meets other ministers and opposition members tomorrow. Chanel Shivan, 
FBC News. Prime Minister Varenga Bainimarama has urged Australian investors to take advantage of the various opportunities Fiji has to offer and invest here. He made the comment while opening the Fiji Australia Business Council meeting in Suva today. Alan Stoltz reports. More than 100 delegates have registered to attend the annual meeting of the Fiji Australia Business Council. Chief Guest Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama took the opportunity to speak to the business sector and potential investors. The message is simple. Fiji is open for business. And there are great opportunities for those um, with the enterprise and foresight to take advantage of this new era of prosperity. A total of 226 Australian projects worth more than $1 billion were registered in Fiji over the past six years. And the 99 implemented during the same time have created more than 1,000 jobs. Fiji has resumed its place in the Pacific Agreement on Closer Economic Relations, or PESA Plus, negotiations. And Bainmarama says Fiji is determined to secure an agreement that takes into account the current trade imbalance and is beneficial to all parties. We believe firmly that the PESA Plus agreement is more than just a trade agreement. It is an agreement that should foster development in the region and bring us closer together in economic union. We have always supported the idea of closer regional integration when it comes to the movement of goods, services, labor, and capital. And we want this agreement to reflect that spirit. Banimarama also highlighted that Spartica TCF scheme is due to expire at the end of the year and it is critical that that be extended beyond this date. The agreement is essential for Fiji's economic growth and development. The government and footwear industry is a major contributor to the Fiji economy, generating around $100 million in exports. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will make an official visit to Fiji on the 19th of next month. Modi's visit was confirmed by the Indian High Commission in Suva this week and this morning the Ministry of Information released details of his visit. Modi is expected to pay a courtesy call to President Ratu Epelina Latikau. He will also meet with his Fijian counterpart Vorenge Bainimarama and other cabinet ministers. The meeting will provide an opportunity for both Prime Ministers to discuss bilateral issues as well as regional developments. Modi will officiate at the unveiling of a plaque for the Prime Parliamentary Library, which was donated by the Government of India. He will also tour the new Fijian Parliament. The Indian Prime Minister will also meet with other Pacific Island leaders during his visit. Now, the Reserve Bank of Fiji says the Fijian economy is poised for its fifth year of consecutive growth. While announcing the decision to maintain the overnight policy rate at 0.5%, the RBF says this will be largely driven by key sectoral performances such as tourism, sugar, construction and financial services. RBF says consumption and investment spending remains firm, supported by strong private sector credit growth and improved confidence. Governor Barry Whiteside has, however, cautioned that pressure on the balance of payments and continued higher growth in imports remain a concern. And inflation slowed further to 0.3% in September. Foreign reserves were around $1.7 billion on 31st October. Coming up after the break, a changes to FNPF members' accounts to come into effect tomorrow. Bola, Bola FM na bandwe na sera ni wasini ngona ni bataran ni sibiti kubeki anda na diwa ena tini na miniti na mepa kuri tiwa lebeng kerabi na nonton nonongo kanda na tapi tiwa ni nonona kaloko ena kaben den deva bila na tiwa lebeng na mepa tiwa na wani mata kabo na lebeng sarti kuna bisa reta lebeng ni na nama ka kando bata tiwa kini na kena ndau rogo di kana maki. Bola binaka, ayo salam ilawa. Do bata kia wana bataran na wani tiwa na kaloko moni tiki na baru buka. Welcome back. This is FBC News. All Fiji National Provident Fund members' accounts will be divided into two from tomorrow as part of reforms implemented by FNPF. 
70% of members' balance will be kept as preserved account and the remaining 30% will be set aside as general account. Savara Tambua has more. From tomorrow, Provident Fund members will notice a change in their account. 70% of members' contributions will be set aside for retirement. Members will only be able to withdraw from this account for housing purposes. The only time that one can access the preserved account is when he is buying a land or building house for the first time. Only then will, be, will he be able to access the monies in his preserved account up to 30%. And 30% equates to about 21%. So 21% plus the 30% in a general account totals 51%. Under the old legislation, under the old laws, or the old policies, you can access up to two-thirds or 66%. So when we resume services on the 25th of November, your eligibility would have gone down from the two-thirds under the new law or 66% to 51%. The FNPF will not accept any charges from members withdrawing their funds for properties. All that uh, it's encompassed in the legislation, we know that 70% is now preserved for your retirement and we are fulfilling the objective and the purpose of the legislation. There's no reason to put a charge on that account and hence the decision by the fund to discharge all charges. Conditions for other withdrawals will remain the same. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Most of the people who attended a public consultation about plans to convert Suva's Cumming Street into a pedestrian mall have supported the plans. The consultation was held at the Suva Civic Center last night. Sakusa Naivua reports. The first public consultation attracted mainly members of the business community operating on Cumming Street. A former city planner, Asinada Rangingia, supports the proposal. Conversion of uh, Cumming Street into a pedestrian mall is good. Good in the sense that uh, it will create a different environment, different atmosphere. Now obviously the council will have the responsibility of ensuring that everything will flow in terms of issues and concepts from different um, stakeholders. The stakeholders meaning the property owners, you also have the pedestrians, you also have different sectors of society that would view the use of um, Cumming Street as a pedestrian mall differently. Rangingia says she hopes the authorities will consider the flow of traffic in the area. The city council plans to close down the street and turn it into a pedestrian mall. There are mixed reactions from other businesses' houses operating on Cumming Street with operators choosing not to speak on camera. A second consultation will be held early next month. Sakyo Sanaibua, FBC News. The Kandavu Development Committee hopes to raise over $100,000 for scholarships to the children of the province. The fundraising drive held in Suva today is also aimed at bringing together people of the province to hear of the committee's plans for development in the province. Savara Tambur reports. <laughs> After a lapse of 10 years, people from the province of Kandavu gathered in Suba today to raise funds for their children. The province comprises of nine districts and each one is required to collect funds for the provincial levies. The provincial levy covers education, covers all the developments and covers all uh, how to run the Kandavu. Eh? Especially like when they look at um, uh, all the committees that they form. To how they want the Kandavu to be run. Uh, government has uh, already indicated how much they can assist, so the leftover has to be taken care of by the province. Mm. The Rokotui Kandavu also confirmed that the provincial council members have endorsed the resolution to implement a five-year plan. The reasons why we're doing that, because after the five years uh, plan, there will be no more Solinia Sana. So we will, after, uh, after next year, we will um, invest all those money, all those cash into the Fijian Holdings Unit Trust and all the dividends will go to the provincial levels. Secondly, there is a, a, a great uh, demand for the local people, I mean for the people of Kandabu, to buy another vessel. The fundraising drive brings to an end the annual Kandabu Provincial Council meeting where delegates have been encouraged to develop the island's natural resources for the betterment of our people. Sabera Tambua. FBC News. Minister for Women Rosie Agbar says it's time that we strengthen the communication and awareness about breast cancer rather than thinking of it just as a disease. 
Akbar was speaking during the Pinktober morning tea hosted by mobile company Digicel. Akbar says wearing pink ribbon this month provided more meaning in the lives of the cancer patients. The minister says such events shows the excellent development that Fiji has for the benefit of women with breast cancer. She says breast cancer used to be a disease spoken about behind closed doors. However, there's a lot of support from the community nowadays. And the women minister thanked everyone who showed support towards the cancer patients whole of this month. Well, it's Friday Night Sports now, and Jamie, I have only two words for you. Sukuna Ball. Well, that's right, Amrita. Well, while a few people dressed up today to celebrate Halloween, the ANZ Stadium was filled with red and blue outfits to show team support at the annual Sukuna Bowl. We take a look at that after the break. And Fijian flyer Henry Spate ready for his long-awaited Wallaby debut this weekend. Details coming up. You can sit on Mirchi FM for Raftar. I am here with you, Mr. Sathya Krishnil. I am here with you and I am here with you. And in the PGM and the PGM, you are listening to us. You are listening to us and you are listening to us. Hello guys, I am DJ Krishnil. You can listen to us on Mirchi FM for Raftar. Monday to Friday, we will rock you from 3 to 7 at night. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Now, my heart is hot. I'm going to go to the The Vodafone Flying Fijians continue training at its base camp in France ahead of its November internationals. Huka Sunia Koto has joined the side to replace Vili Vekoso, who was not allowed to travel due to visa issues. Meanwhile, the bulk of players plying their trade in Europe will be in action for their clubs in competitions in France and England this weekend. The Flying Fijians coaching staff are hopeful that none of their players sustain any injuries and return to camp on Monday to resume preparations. Fiji plays France on Sunday week, Wales on November 16th, and the USA on November 22nd. And while Fijian flyer Henry Spate's dream to don the Wallabies jumper will become reality when Australia takes on the Barbarians at Twickenham Stadium in England on Sunday. New Wallabies coach Michael Checker has named the Brumbies, Brumbies speedster and Rob Horn on the wings in the warm-up match before tests against Wales, France, England and Ireland. Spate was expected to make his international debut for Australia in September during the Rugby Championship. However, he missed out after picking up a hamstring injury, but is now ready to make his mark. It's dragged on longer than, than normal, but um, I'm finally, finally here with, with the squad and uh, just, just thankful for, to, to check in and, and the management for, for, uh, for the faith. And, and trust to, to give me this opportunity this weekend and uh, it's, it's something that I'm really looking forward to. Fellow Fijian Tevita Kurindrani will, will partner Matt Toomo in the midfield with Israel Folau at fullback. The Barbarians will face the Wallabies on Sunday. The annual Sukuna Bowl Challenge took place in Suva today, but it wasn't only about the games. Just like each year, supporters from both the Army and police flock the streets in their respective force colours to support their team in the battle to win the title. The supporters were at the grounds from early this morning to cheer for their teams in various events. Josephine Navula finds out what it means to fans to dress up for the Saguna Bowl. Walu Walu Blues! <laughs> Go Team Ami! It is a family affair when it comes to the annual Sukuna Bowl Challenge. From early in the morning in Lothala Bay, the venue of the challenge saw fans standing up in numbers draped in their stunning outfit to support their respective teams. We just support the police team. We've been doing this for how many years? My children, my husband, my, my husband is now playing for the oldies, but we've been here. We just love the Sukuna Ball. While it is a tradition to don the blue or red outfits, it doesn't come cheap. It's a our t-shirt is $1.50 and uh, not less than, uh, uh, sorry, not more than $50. The challenge is also a time to mingle and make new friends. Our husbands, our spouses who are far away in the military on duty and uh, we wish them well too. And we hope they are watching the game today. And uh, we are supporters here, so we go for army. Another year of Sukunobol is over and the costumes will be put away 
but you can expect more of the same on and off the field in 2015. Josephine Vula, FBC Sports. And the latest results from the ANZ Stadium. Army has wrestled the schooner ball from holders police with an 18-10 victory. Army outscored police two tries to one to take the Tano back to Ndelainambua. Meanwhile, in Sukuna Bowl football, Army successfully defended its title after holding police to a nil-all draw today. It was a game of miss missed chances with both teams unable to find the back of the net. Army will keep the trophy for another year and the team says the match was far from easy despite the result. Pleasing to see that uh, we retain this uh, Sukuna Bowl soccer trophy for one more year. Uh, we did have a hard time against the uh, police. Police did a really good job penetrating to us, but through our teamwork, we really managed to retain this uh, Skunabul soccer trophy. Both teams featured a number of district and national football reps. Fiji will once again host the World Hockey League and Oceania Pacific Cup Championship in Suva this December. The two tournaments will run concurrently with the winners in the men's and women's grades progressing to the second round of the Rio Olympic Game qualifiers next year. Tsale Ndaudakavaka reports. The Fiji men's and women's hockey sides will be in action at the National Hockey Centre in December. A total of six regional teams will come to compete in the World Hockey League and Oceania Pacific Cup Championships. This year's series, the World Series, basically is the first stage in the qualification for the Rio Olympic Games. Uh, the winner of this competition in the men's category goes on to Singapore at the end of January. And for the women's competition, uh, we'll go on to India in, the, in March sometimes. For the first time in its history, the Oceania Pacific Cup will be held alongside the World Hockey League. The National Federation has allowed us to run the two uh, together and so when Fiji plays Samoa the result will stand for both competitions so they won't have to play each other twice. Preparations have started in advance with ONOC working closely with Fesanoc to ensure a smooth sailing competition. We've uh, put in place some uh, line managers to oversee various aspects from sponsorship to communications uh, as well as venue services and uh, so it's all, all an exciting time. The League Round 1 and Pacific Cup Championship will be held from the 6th to the 13th of December. Thailand or Kazakh, FBC Sports. And that is your sports for tonight. I'll be back again on Monday, but until then, Amrita will keep you updated over the weekend with the latest sports results. It's back to her now for business. <laughs> Well, the Fiji Human Resource Institute is holding its 8th National Convention in Nadi with the theme Diversity in Human Resources. Human resource practitioners from around the country are attending the two-day event, which will close tomorrow night with the presentation of three major awards. Young HR Practitioner, Senior HR Practitioner, an organization with best HR practice will be known tomorrow. The convention features four international speakers and close to 145 delegates. HR is very, very critical because end of the day, uh, what we want to make sure that organizations have the right practices, organizations promote uh, legal you know, requirements and follow legal requirements, and also we want to see people development, very, very important. So HR, you know, it plays a very critical role in the organization. Unfortunately, in not every organization we see HR uh, tend to be sitting onto the table of uh, strategic issues. Weather time, Trish, will it be rain or shine? Well, Amrita, it's the last day of October and cloudy conditions prevailed over most parts of the country. A trough of low pressure lies just the west of Fiji. Meanwhile, another trough of low pressure continues, continues to affect Samoa and extends southeast towards the north of Southern Cooks. Temperatures Suva and Savo Savo recorded 29, while the rest of the major centers, Nandi, Lotokamba and Lambasa, all hit 32 degrees. Expect some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands becoming frequent tomorrow. 
Elsewhere, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers. Some showers over the interior and in eastern parts of the larger islands. Afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Our photo today was taken by Taniela Veitata and this was taken at the Warwick Resort on the Coral Coast. Send us your photos that you would like to share with us or send them into citizens' eyes at fbc.com.fj. Well, Rain, it is then. The main points again. Australia has lifted all remaining sanctions and is ready to help establish full and normal relations with Fiji. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will make an official visit to Fiji on the 19th of next month. And the Reserve Bank of Fiji says the Fijian economy is poised for its fifth year of consecutive growth. On to this week's poll question. Should there be a ban on fireworks? Visit our FPC website to take part. Now remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. That's our news for today. Join me again tomorrow. Until then, good night.